Hidden amidst the glitzy skyscrapers is a spiritual oasis of tolerance in Jabal Ali. A gurudwara, a church, and a temple stand next to each other. At Jabal Ali is Guru Nanak Darbar Gurudwara. We meet Surendra Kandhari, a first-generation resident of Dubai. Kandhari established this five-floor gurudwara as a community center in 2008 on a land donated by the government. But I must say here, I think the rulers of the UAE are very, very accepting foreigners, and they also believe in diversity. They believe in inclusiveness, and we are really grateful to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and Prime Minister of UAE, who gave us land free in 2008 to build the first gurdwara in the UAE. And for that, I was very, I was blessed to say that. we could serve this as a community center more than a gurudwara kandhari says during the covid pandemic the gurudwara langar fed thousands of blue collared workers we we feel responsible that they all are our own citizens they are all human beings they are all indian citizens and we feel that if we can help them and we have the chance to help them why should we not help them creating a guinness book of world record in 2017 for serving 101 nationalities this gurudwara has been a hallmark of service and kandhari feels indians are trusted because of prime minister narendra modi i think uh, we have a very charismatic prime minister he is a star of stars he changed the whole face of india his words of wisdom were so clear and so powerful that every indian was proud to be an indian we have so much of collaboration between india and uae today that all the ports now in india are managed by the dp world which is a uae company the investments of uae are so large in india and they look forward to india as a place of good investment and they have a lot of trust for indians and i'm telling you in uae we have the highest respect and do you think uh, prime minister modi has a role in this 100% his uh, rapport with the president of UAE Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan is fantastic he calls him a brother and that relationship of brotherhood improves a lot of act business activity all this brotherhood is converting into business activity today me me come on with the uh, prime minister modi coming in the whole profile of the indian diaspora has is definitely uh, gone up and i think um, every indian holds themselves pride and you know says um, you know we're indian we, this is this is what we're capable of uh, it's a sentiment indian shared by nargis khambata at gems modern academy as well the principal of the school says indians outside india today proudly celebrate themselves I think the last decade has been um, there's been a, a paradigm shift, um, and of course we were always very well respected because Indians played a very big role in setting up, um, you know, uh, the UAE at one point, and especially the business community here. And a lot of people who are running businesses here now are, have been through our schools and our institutions, and so that sense of you know belonging to both countries is so strong, and that's why I think the the recent um, accord that's been signed by both countries on the business front is phenomenal because uh, this is truly our second home. Uh, I think um, Prime Minister Modi has made a huge impact. Impact in terms of the sense of pride we feel, um, the sense the uh, the government has always been supportive. Let me tell you that. Kambata recalls August 23rd last year when India made history, becoming the first country to land on the lunar South Pole. Joining an elite club of countries to achieve a soft landing on the moon after the United States, the former Soviet Union, and China. The moon moment made Indians across the world unite in celebration. All went to hear from the Secretary Department of Space and Chairman ISRO Sri S Somnath. 
I think for us the defining moment was when it wasn't successful the first time and um, Prime Minister Modi went and hugged the ISRO chief um, you know, and patted him and, and gratified him. It was a learning moment for our students because it showed them that you know, the Prime Minister's office, which is the highest office, um, has such high expectations of you know, institutions, but um, a moment of failure does not mean that the, the whole program has failed. It's a moment of failure and you can overcome and really be empowered to, to reach your heights of success. So when we were successful, it was like a double whammy. And I think um, from the students to the teachers, all our physics teachers, can hear the children growing up. Yes. Um, all of our um, students uh, and our physics teachers and all of our teachers, um, a, we were, it was a thumping moment. I can't tell you the excitement because we were all in the auditorium and we saw, um, you know, uh, the impact of what was happening and I think there were tears all across uh, to show how that transition happened. So I'm going to actually tell you a story and uh, we, we are very, very proud. This is our child who in 2020, in the middle of COVID, um, he graduated or got into Stanford University. This is Adit Palicha, who is currently the CEO and founder of Zepto along with Kaivalya Gandhi. And Adit was our student who graduated in 2020, uh, got into Stanford and um, we have a modern incubator here. Sheikh Hamdan has, you know, it's, it's a Hamdan incubator that we have. And it was the first unicorn of 2023 in India. We're so proud of him, so proud of our students because this is the support we get for innovation, mm. for um, you know everything that we want. The entire ecosystem is here, and I think um, the respect that Indians have today uh, in society here is uh, top notch. Prime Minister Modi's recent visit to Abu Dhabi for the inauguration of the largest Hindu temple in West Asia had a special connect with Indians. आज 21वीं सदी के इस तीसरे दशक में भारत और यूएई का रिश्ता एक अभूतपूर्व ऊंचाई पर पहुंच रहा है हम एक दूसरे की प्रोग्रेस में पार्टनर है हमारा रिश्ता टैलेंट का है इनोवेशन का है कल्चर का है। बीते समय में हमने हर दिशा में अपने संबंधों को नई ऊर्जा दी है हम दो दोनों देश साथ मिलकर चले हैं साथ मिलकर आगे बढ़े प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ यू की पूरी गवर्नमेंट ने कितने बड़े दिल से करोड़ों भारतवासियों की इच्छा को पूरा किया है 140 करोड़ हिंदुस्तानियों के दिल को जीत लिया मुस्लिम किंग डोनेटेड लैंड फॉर अ हिंदू मंदिर वेर द लीड आर्किटेक्ट इज अ कैथोलिक क्रिश्चियन प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजर वॉज अ सिख foundational designer is a buddhist construction company is a parsi group and the director comes from a jain tradition uh, so it's it's the message of the ultimate uh, harmony uh, the ultimate unification one would say and uh, also about coexistence uh, a message of uh, peace as well Elan Modi event at Zayed Sports City Stadium sent a euphoric message to the 36 lakh strong Indian community in UAE. Tell us what, when you say great for India, what is that one work that you think is very great for the country? Now India is on the globe. It's on the globe? What? It's one home. We can say it's one home. All said, everything we, he made him as all a single thing. And there is the, that great sense of unity among various. Unity, you can say uh, so, 
all of you come from different states of yes, India, yes. but when you are in Abu Dhabi or in other Dubai. countries, Dubai. you feel united yes. Yes. as yeah. one. We are Indians. We are yeah. proud to say we are yeah. Indians. We are proud Indians. Yes. India and Dubai is the best leader now in the world. I, I've, been, I've been living in Dubai for 15 years and the way we are treated now is, oh my God, Indians have a different, oh, kind, different way of... When you say that you have been living here for 15 years, what has changed in the last 10 years in particular? 2014 se pehle kya tha and what about now? Yeah, the way people are treating us, the way, you know, the government organizations, the other nationalities treating us has completely changed. We have been recognized, we have been given opportunities. They say, boss, you are Indian, you have Modi, what else do you want? Modi hai, to kuch bhi possible hai. Before 2024, we are Indian, but now we are proudly Indian. Yes, we are feeling so, so proud of Modi ji, because Modi hai to mumkin hai, because you cannot imagine a temple being built in UAE, which has become... But there, are, there are three temples in Dubai already. Yeah, but not on a bigger scale. This is like a monument. So it is historic. And it's a proud moment for all of us. As he rightly said, he's not an ordinary man. He's a, he's a tall, giant leader of the world. He says, Vasudeva Kutumpakam. And he truly proves that the world is under one umbrella. And he is one among the tall leaders of the world. In this stadium, Dharkan Bharat, UAE, Dosti, Jindabad. हर सांस कह रही है भारत यही दोस्ती जिंदाबाद हर आवाज कह रही है भारत यही he has really made India popular. 83-year-old Mohan Valrani was among the few who received the last Indian Prime Minister in UAE, that was Indira Gandhi. Today he remembers the long diplomatic journey India has covered with Prime Minister Modi at the helm. As someone who has seen the transition of UAE, uh, what do you think has changed in the last 10 years of Prime Minister Modi in particular? Oh, I salute him. I mean, he. Uh, what he has achieved, as I told you, is something unbelievable. The relationship with UAE, not only UAE, but all the Gulf countries. UAE in particular, of course. Abu Dhabi in particular. I mean, he's just, uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed is just a phone call away. I remember 19... Uh, when did Indira Gandhi came? Indira Gandhi came in 19... Uh, well, I don't remember the year. I was there. I was there at the airport. We received her. And after that, after that, we never had a visit of any prime minister till 10 years back. And what has been achieved in 10 years, uh, the standard, the attitude towards Indian, uh, has been, uh, I have no words to describe, has been excellent. We don't anymore feel that we are a second class community or second class citizen. We feel we are treated as at par. We are treated as a family and we are treated as, as par. They, they have a lot of respect for Indians. Because that was what I was In 1966, when he moved to Dubai from Mumbai with just seven dollars in his pocket, little did he know that he would establish a partnership of 55 years with Emiratis, creating one of the biggest conglomeration of Al Shirawi group of companies. Two different families, different religions, different countries, different cultures, but we have stayed together for 55 years. Me and my partner Abdullah, we are the first generation. The second generation has taken charge. We were first friends and then we became partners. And in uh, the attitude towards Indians and the uh, standing of Indians, of course, Dubai was a small town, uh, you can, a big village or a small town, few hundred thousand people. 
So, so everybody knew everybody. But uh, the, the difference, you can say, chalk and cheese. But Mr. Modi is seen as anti-minority, that impression that is there in India of him. Yeah, that impression is not there in UAE. I'm surprised that the Indians don't understand. I mean, uh, I just, I built the Indian club here. Uh, again, I came back at a little time to spare, so I uh, took over the chairmanship of India Club. We have every, we are, all our members are from every part of India, all over. All the states that are members of, they are members of India Club. We live in complete peace, harmony, we enjoy all the festivals together. His son, 52-year-old Naveen Valrani, studied business at the top-ranking Wharton School in America. Naveen talks about great camaraderie between Emiratis and Indians. Was it unimaginable that we would have the largest temple in Asia in Abu Dhabi? Quite honestly, uh, no. Um, the UAE has always been a country of tremendous ambition. And uh, when it came to the declaration of the year of tolerance, where our president brought together uh, communities from di of different faith faiths and sat across the table and said, I want to build a model society. So the te we knew the temple was going to happen. Um, and and uh, would, I, would I have bet on it? Yes. Um, I think, you know, with, with a visionary ruler like uh, His Highness uh, Mohammed bin Zayed uh, and also Prime Minister Modi, both at the helm of their respective countries, these type of things will, are more the norm, uh, not the exception. So a lot. I can start with just on a personal note. We all in life look for heroes and we look for people who inspire us in different aspects of life. And Prime Minister Modi is one of those individuals that leads a life of integrity, of discipline uh, and of, of, of deep, deep humility. And when I see Prime Minister Modi, I say, wow, what a, what a man. You know, if I could model my life on him, even just achieve 10% of, of the way he leads his life, that would be truly amazing. So on a personal level, there's always a connection to such personalities. Um, on, a, on, a, on a community level, he, whether it's the UAE or the United States, he... Talking about UAE. Yeah, so in, in the UAE, he made us believe that we can go beyond what we have achieved. We can aim for the, for the stars. And you know how they say, aim for the stars and you'll get to somewhere sort of between the ground and the stars. But he, for, when, with him, it was aim for the stars and you will get to the stars. So first of all, the, as you might be aware and you might have heard from people, the trade and cultural relationship had existed for over 100 years here between India. So it has been a real brotherly relations between Emiratis and Indians. However, in uh, the first 10 years from 2002, the infrastructure build up and Dubai becoming a hub really attracted Indians, both the business people who were here, the people who were working here and the people who were having businesses in India to invest in UAE, invest in the property, invest in creating their businesses, both in free zones where you did not need a partner because, you know, for trading LLCs on land, you needed a local partner. So that was there earlier. However, even those rules in last 10 years have changed. So that means you can have 100% your own business, be it free zone or be it on land, either places. Earlier you could have it only in the free zone. Number of free zones have been created in UAE, in Dubai in particular, but UAE in general, number of free zones in all the countries. That made it easy for people to have their manufacturing set up, their logistics set up, their distribution set up. Also, ease of doing business, ease of setting up of the business, ease 
a digital governance, digital transformation in last 10 years has taken place that has attracted Indians to invest. If you look at free zone, I think over 50% are the Indians who have invested. Dilip Sinha led Indian Business and Professional Council two years ago. This 62-year-old has been in Dubai for 34 years. The investment opportunities that India offers to the world have made industrialists take keen interest in the India story. Many other businesses, both Indian and Emiratis, have started investing back. You know, I might just point out to you during the Dubai Expo, all the states were coming here and meeting the investors, both the Emirati investors, the government, semi-government and private investors. And what I saw during that time, the amount of MOUs were signed by UP, by Maharashtra, by Karnataka, by Kerala, by different states was tremendous. So that investments were all FDI investment which are now converting into reality in terms of uh, manufacturing in terms of IT, in terms of uh, digital uh, space, in uh, also in the areas of uh, logistics, warehousing, uh, ports and services. Those are the areas and oil and gas of course. Dubai Expo 2020 changed the way UAE viewed India with one of the biggest participation of Indian businesses. Maham Malik was among those who had volunteered. From Allahabad in Uttar Pradesh, Maham moved to Dubai only in December 2020 after her marriage. India's participation in Expo 2020 was one of the biggest participations ever. We had the biggest pavilion in, uh, uh, on site. We had the highest uh, footfall. And uh, our theme was very different from the rest. So the objective of the India Pavilion in Expo 2020 was to showcase businesses. And it was one of the few pavilions who actually made a space for the startups to come, showcase their products, and uh, to attract eyeballs, mainly of the investors. Some of the startups that took off after uh, their participating in Expo 2020, the, like the trajectory completely changed, was, uh, the, were the space startups, Dhruva Space, Bellatrix, they were all there, uh, Agni Cool, and uh, many other smaller ones all, as well which followed. For her, Prime Minister Modi is a CEO who gives confidence to the entire diaspora irrespective of the religion. It's kind of a global phenomenon. The more your country invests in businesses in another country, the more uh, you're recognized as a, uh, you know, as a citizen. So, of course, uh, with a lot of projects that are coming up with the giants from India, um, be it the chemical park in Abu Dhabi, be it the investments from Reliance, be it um, the projects that are being taken up by uh, uh, LNT, ArcelorMittal, and so on, um, it has definitely amped up the image of Indian and Indian engineers in in the region. So it's not just IT which is profiting out of, um, as an industry, it is the chemical industry, the oil and gas industry as well which is profiting out of uh, such initiatives taken by the government.